This sermon is titled My Mind Part 5 Renewing Your Mind and Renewed Thinking Be enriched as you listen We've been uh, doing the sermon series on my mind we call the sermon series my mind we've been talking about what the bible has to say concerning our mind concerning the challenges that we face in the mind and how we overcome those challenges this is uh, today will be the fifth sermon in this series we've got two more to go well cover, take us to the end of the month in case you missed any of the earlier sermons uh, you can just go to our church website abcw.org/mymind and then you'll find all the sermons listed there so you're most welcome to go back or even if you just want to recap any of the earlier sermons uh, the sermon notes are available and all of this should be out in a book uh, hopefully by the time we finish the sermon series or maybe uh, a week later so that you can again go back and study all of these things and there'll be a lot more in this in the book than what we can do on a sunday morning You know, we try to keep the sermons to somewhere about 40 minutes, but uh, there will be a lot more available uh, uh, in the book. So today, I want us to, want to bring our attention to one important discipline the Bible teaches us to practice with our minds, and it's called renewing the mind. renewing the mind and the bible teaches us to live with renewed thinking renewed thinking and so we're going to spend some time on that the renewal of the mind and living with renewed thinking now let's talk about the condition of the human mind before we were born again before a person comes to know jesus christ and begins their walk with God what is the condition of the human mind now we are born into this world and by default we take on the thinking or the thought processes the way of thinking the patterns of thinking that's in our environment we begin to think just like everybody else around us and sadly that's not always the right way to think uh sometimes it's very self-centered very you know self-focused and so on and so the bible in many places describes to us the condition of the mind before we are born again now we're not going to go we're not going to study all of that in detail i'll just summarize it in some of the words that we find used in scripture it t- tells us that the mind is for example blinded or it is unclean it's vain in its thinking or it's carnal very fleshly centered desiring to gratify the desires of the flesh it's an enemy toward god it's against the things of god it's corrupt it's earthly minded very focused on here and now on the things of the earth proud defiled and the many others but we have, we recognize immediately that this is not very good the condition of the mind before we get saved this is how our mind is and what we all need to understand is that when we are born again we receive jesus christ into our lives we become new creation in our spirit but the mind is left the same example you know if a 15 year old six feet black hair black eyes <laughs> guy accepts jesus christ at that moment he's born again he becomes a new creation in his spirit wonderful but he's still a 15 year old his mind is still that of a 15 year old he suddenly doesn't become an adult in his mind no so the condition of mind is as it was when a person becomes born again receives Jesus Christ. So in your spirit you receive the life of God. You've become a new person, but in the mind the condition is as is. And that's why the renewing of the mind is so important. 
And so the Apostle Paul in, 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 in the book of Romans, he, you know, he begins, it's a beautiful book to study. In Romans chapter 1, he uh, talks about the existence of God and how man has fallen. And then he journeys through how you know, our sins are forgiven through the cross of Jesus Christ and how we are brought into relationship with God, we have peace with God. And then when he starts talking about the Christian life in chapter 12, the first thing he tells us to do about living the Christian life is this. Romans 12, let's go to verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This is the way we've got to live the Christian life. He talks about the renewing of the mind. Romans 12, verse 2. He says, And do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, many of us have probably read this verse many times. And I'm just reading verse 2 in isolation. It's, of course, uh, in, presented to us in relation to verse 1. But look at what he says. He says, do not be conformed to this world. So we've, we're growing up in this world and there are all these things around us, but the call for us to live this life as believers is don't be conformed. Don't pattern yourself. Don't fashion yourself after this world. Don't, do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed. How? By the renewing of your minds. So be transformed. That word transformed is the Greek word metamorpho. In English we have the word metamorphosis. So he says don't be conformed. But undergo metamorphosis. A change in form. A classic example of metamorphosis is that of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. That wiggly little worm crawling <laughs> looks ugly. And then it undergoes metamorphosis, becomes a beautiful free-flying butterfly. So he says, Paul says, don't be conformed to the world, but have a metamorphosis, have a, this transformation in your lifestyle. But that transformation is possible by the renewing of your minds. Are you all with me? So our mind needs to be renewed. That word renewed simply means to be renovated, reformed, reformation. So there's a reformation, a renovation that needs to take place in our mind, our way of thinking, which will result in a transformation in a way of living. So transform the renewing of the mind results in a transformed life. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed. How? By the renewing of your minds. So, the renewing of the mind is so important for us to experience this metamorphosis, this change in the way we live, a lifestyle. And then he continues in that same verse. He says, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That word prove is the word, the Greek means to analyze, to reason, to examine, to test. You know, and if you want to think about it, if you, you know, if you think about a chemistry lab, you kind of do some experiments, and then you test out what that chemical is, and you say, okay, this is what it is. You analyze it. So that's kind of the picture there. He says, you prove, you analyze, you test out, and you come to the conclusion what the will of God is, what is good, acceptable, and perfect to God. So the renewed mind is also important for all of us in order to analyze, in order to prove the will of God. You see, sometimes some of us Christians, we we think our mind is bad. Don't use your mind. Just walk by faith. We think walking by faith means get rid of your mind. No. You need a renewed mind to live by faith. Because God, the same God who said walk by faith, also said 
Renew your minds. So the renewed mind enables us to live the life of faith. And what the renewed mind enables us to do is to think, to analyze, to test out, to prove what is the will of God. So God didn't say don't use your mind. He said renew it and use it. Are you with me so far? Yes or no? So the renewed mind serves two purposes here in this verse. One, it's going to help us experience a transformation in our living. The way we live is going to change. It's, it's go, there's going to be a metamorphosis in our lifestyle. And the renewed mind is also going to help us prove the will of God. Know what is the will of God. Know what is good, acceptable, and pleasing to God. So two reasons why we need to renew our minds. So the question, of course, is, okay, how do we do this? How do we renew our mind? And what is what, what, what does it mean to renew our mind? So, let me put it like this. I'll make the statement and then we will look up the verse. A renewed mind is a mind that thinks aligned to God's thoughts and God's ways. God's thoughts and God's ways. So that's a renewed mind. It's been restructured, reformed, renovated to think God's thoughts and God's ways. And this passage of Scripture that we're going to look at is Isaiah 55, verses 7 through 11. It says, Isaiah 55, verses 7 through 11. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, and does not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth in birth, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Now look at verses 7 through 9. God is saying, let the wicked person, let the unrighteous man get rid of his own thoughts and his own ways. That means our thoughts and our ways are wicked. Get rid of it. Leave it aside. And then he says, let him return or let him come to me. So we let go of our own carnal, evil, wicked ways and thoughts. Get rid of your own, our own ways and thoughts. Then we come to God. Return to him. And then he says, I want you to let go of your ways and thoughts because my ways and my thoughts, God's ways and God's thoughts, are much higher the implication in all of this is you let go of your ways and your thoughts. You come to me, take on my ways and my thoughts. That's the implication. So what's a renewed mind? A renewed mind is a mind that says, I'm letting go of my own ways, my own thoughts, and I'm going to take on God's ways and God's thoughts. Are you with me so far? So that's a renewed mind. We intentionally, in every situation in life, instead of doing it our way and according to our own thoughts, which we said by default are wicked, corrupt, defiled, so on, we're making a deliberate choice. God, what are your thoughts in this situation? What are your ways in this situation? And I'm going to live by your thoughts and your ways in this situation. What's happening? Your mind is renewed. It's taking on God's thoughts and God's ways, and it will consequently result in a transformation of your way of life, a metamorphosis, a change in form of how you live life. When you and I make that transition from our own thoughts and our ways to God's thoughts and God's ways. Now, of course, the question is, how do we do it? Well, in the same passage in Isaiah 55, God, right after he tells us, you know, this exchange needs to happen, 
Right? And the very next thing he says, my word comes forth. My word is coming to you. So that gives us a clue. That we can take on God's thoughts and God's ways by receiving his words. Because God's word expresses to us the thoughts and the ways of God. God's word expresses to us the thoughts and the ways of God. So when we receive that word, we are saying, I'm going to think in line with the word of God. I'm going to take on the thoughts and the ways of God. In Hebrews 10, verse 15 to 16, we find God explicitly stating this, that he wants his word to be written in our minds. He says, but the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us after he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws, that is his word, into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. So God wants his word to be written upon our minds so that we can think align to his thoughts and his ways. So when God's word is written in our hearts and minds, we begin to think aligned to God's thoughts and God's ways. And this renewing of the mind must happen in all areas. Now let me, I will come back to uh, you know, how we receive God's word and, and, and think, al uh, think along that. But let me illustrate it with an example. Suppose a person, a believer, experiences failure in life. You know, maybe, you know, if you're in college, maybe you failed exam or something else in life, you know, maybe an interview didn't go well, maybe a, a, an assignment in your workplace didn't go well. Let's, some, ex, some failure, you experience some kind of a failure. But if your mind is renewed to the Word of God, how would you think? Here's how a believer would think. Whose mind is renewed to God's word, God's thoughts and God's ways. He acknowledges, he recognizes failure has, has happened. You know, I failed, something happened. I didn't do well. Um, I take responsibility my, in my part in this whole thing. And uh, I'm not denying that. I take responsibility for the failure. But in that, in that situation of failure, here's how he's thinking. He's thinking, God has said... I will be like a tree planted by rivers of water. I will bring forth my fruit in its season. My leaf will not wither. Whatever I do will prosper. He's thinking, that, is, that was Psalm 1, 1, and 1 to 3. He's thinking based on the word. Or Psalm 35, 27. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the success of his servant. So he's thinking, God wants me to succeed. He's experienced failure, but what's he thinking? God is on my side. He has pleasure in seeing me succeed. That's based on Psalm 35, verse 27. Or he can think, he will think like this. You know, yes, I've experienced failure, but God said in his word, if I meditate in his word, I follow his word, I will make my way prosperous and I will have good success. That's Joshua 1 and verse 8. So, the experience, yes, I am seeing, I'm taking responsibility for this failure, but my thinking is still aligned to what God has spoken. And God said, He will make my way prosperous. I will have good success. So how was He able to think like that? Because His mind is renewed to the Word of God. Are you listening? But if a believer's mind is not renewed to the Word of God, an unrenewed mind, a believer with an unrenewed mind, in that same situation of failure will think like this. Ah, oh, I'm a dry tree. My leaf is all dried up. I will never succeed in anything I do. Maybe that's God's will for my life. He's thinking opposite to the Word of God. Opposite to Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Or he will think like this. Maybe God never wants me to succeed. Maybe He's just preparing me for heaven through this life of failure. He's thinking opposite to Psalm 35, verse 27. Maybe all God wants me to do is read the Bible and I will be a failure in life because God never promised me good success. 
He's thinking opposite to Joshua 1.8. Are you listening? You don't seem convinced. A renewed mind takes on the thoughts and the ways of God. And the way you take on the thoughts and the ways of God is by thinking in line with the Word of God. Very simple. An unrenewed mind thinks whatever. It can think religious, but being religious doesn't mean you're thinking according to the Word of God. Being religious makes you feel pious. God's not interested in that. He's interested. Are you thinking in line with my words, my thoughts, my ways? Or take another scenario. Example. You get bad news. Something's gone wrong. Bad news. Something happens. And yes, we all have our feelings, our emotions come into play. You know, we could feel sad, we could feel upset. Uh, you've heard bad news. You could feel anxious, fearful, all those things are normal. Uh, so you process that. But in the moment of that bad news, how would a believer think? How would a believer with a renewed mind think? You would think Psalm 112, verse 7. My heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. I will not be afraid of bad news. I'm just putting it in modern English. You know, King James will say bad tidings or something like that. But <laughs> My heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Or Proverbs 3, 26, 27. I'm not afraid of bad news because the Lord is my confidence. And in the fear of the Lord, I have strong confidence. Depending on what that news is. What's he doing? His mind is going to the Word of God rather than letting the news dictate his thinking. He's letting the Word of God dictate his thinking. That's a renewed mind. You're taking on the thoughts and the ways of God in a real-life situation. And so now what you're doing? Instead of thinking the, enorm the, the, the way of the world, you're thinking according to God's thoughts and God's ways. But my steps are ordered by the Lord. Even if I fall, I will not be utterly forsaken, for the Lord upholds me. You know, whatever that situation might be. You're thinking aligned to God's thoughts and God's ways. The Word of God. That's renewed thinking. To take on intentionally in every given situation. We can talk about many scenarios in the book. There will be several other you know, examples uh, of, of real scenarios. But the point is this, that in every situation in life, we, have a, we make a deliberate choice to say, I'm going to forsake my own thoughts, my own ways. I'm going to take on the thoughts and the ways of God. What, what is the Word of God saying in this situation? I'm going to think aligned to the Word of God, taking on the thoughts and the ways of God. When there's a financial need, rather than saying, God wants me to be left in this, you can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in want. My God will supply for all my needs. What are you doing? You're thinking according to God's word. You're taking on the thoughts and the ways of God in that situation. And that's renewed thinking. You're not denying the situation, but you're saying, I recognize this, and I also recognize what God has spoken in His Word, so I'm going to think aligned to the Word of God in that situation. So, in order for us to renew our thinking, we renew the mind with the Word of God and revelation from the Holy Spirit. We renew our mind with the Word of God and with revelation from the Holy Spirit. So in every situation, Holy Spirit, what are you telling me? Sometimes the Holy Spirit will remind you of the Word of God. This is what the Bible says. Because Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will bring everything to your remembrance. Sometimes you would have read something in Scripture a long time ago, and you're in a situation, you pray, Holy Spirit, what is, what is, what is the mind of God in this? And the Holy Spirit will remind you of that Scripture. He brings it to your remembrance. So, we renew our minds by thinking aligned to the Word of God 
and to the revelation of the Holy Spirit. So I asked the Holy Spirit, God, what is God saying? Holy Spirit, what do you say in this situation? How must I think? How must I react? How must I respond? What must I do? And He's going to let you know the ways and thoughts of God in that situation. And you can think of many life scenarios. Example, and I think we've talked about this in an earlier message. Suppose somebody does harm to you. They do something wrong. They've been unfair to you. Maybe a colleague in your workplace didn't, you know, wasn't nice to you. Whatever, they've done something wrong. And the, our own way is, let me get back, retaliate, do something, you know, or let me show him who's in charge, whatever. But at that moment, if you pause and say, what are the ways and thoughts of God? Maybe the Holy Spirit reminds you. Do not, be, do not be overcome by evil. Instead, overcome evil with good. That's the Word of God. That's not normal thinking. That's not natural thinking. But the, whole, the Word of God says, overcome evil with good. So what do you do in that situation? So, okay, Holy Spirit, show me what good can I do to this person. He's done something hard to me or harsh to me. But God's Word says, overcome evil with good. So what good can I do to this person? And maybe, you know, buy him lunch or whatever. Something that God puts in your heart. Go do this good thing for that person. So what are you doing? You're thinking and acting along, aligned to God's thoughts and God's ways. It's going to change. It's going to transform our way of living. We're going to experience a supernatural change in our lifestyle through renewed thinking. In Hebrews 4.12, so we must understand that the Word of God implanted it, must be implanted in us and it saves our souls. In Hebrews 4 in verse 12, it says, and this is a familiar scripture, it says, The Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So look at the functions of the Word of God and I'll highlight two of that in this verse. The latter part of the verse says, the Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's a discerner, it's a judge. It critically analyzes the thoughts and intents. It tells you, this is right, this is wrong. The Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the moment we expose ourselves, we receive the Word of God, we're going to get to know, this thought is right, this thought is wrong, I, I, I need to, I need, this is what I should go with, this is what I should reject. The Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It'll tell you what's right, what's wrong. And the other thing this verse says is it divides us under soul and spirit. The soul and the spirit are two distinct parts of our being. The soul is the mind, will, and emotions. The spirit is the eternal part of us that connects with God. We did this in the very first message in the series. So the Word of God can separate for you and tell you, this is from your soul, this is from your spirit. So that's why we need to have the Word of God engrafted into us. In James chapter 1, verse 21, the next verse, James 1, 21, James tells us, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. So he says, get rid of all sin, come to God with humility, and receive the word, it can save your soul. The Word of God will save our soul. Now soul, like we said, is the mind, will, emotions, the intellectual, psychological, mental part of us. The word save is the Greek word sozo, which means to heal, deliver, make whole. So as you receive that engrafted Word, the Word has to become innate to you, part of you. And when the Word of God becomes part of you, it will heal. It will deliver. It will make the soul whole. Are you with me so far? Yes or no? That's why the Word of God is so important. You receive that Word. Let it be engrafted. Let it become part of you. Innate to you. Like a natural part of you. 
And that word will save your soul. It'll, it'll deliver, it'll just totally heal and deliver our mind, our will, our emotions. The word of God. So, today, we're talking about renewed thinking. Thinking aligned to the word of God. A renewed mind is a pure mind. You know, it's a process. This is not going to ho happen overnight. But over time, we intentionally reprogram, if you will, our thinking. We go from thinking our ways and our thoughts to God's thoughts and God's ways by taking His Word and what the Holy Spirit gives to us. And as we do this over time, what happens? Your mind is renewed, and a renewed mind is a pure mind. It's a ground where it doesn't mean evil thoughts will not come. Evil thoughts come, but they find no residence because your mind has been renewed. It's now accustomed to thinking God's thoughts and God's ways. Are you listening? So the Holy Spirit can very easily speak to you and your mind is aligned to the voice of the Spirit. And it's no longer a stumbling block to what God wants to do through you. You know, for example, when it comes to the area of generosity, I'll just use that as an example. If our mind is not renewed to the Word of God concerning generosity, meaning scriptures like God loves a cheerful giver, that if you give, you know, God will make all grace abound toward you, that you will have all sufficiency in all things. You can abound to every good. If your mind, let's say this, if your mind is renewed to that, the Holy Spirit can just prompt you and say, give that to that person. And your mind is so renewed, it'll agree to it. And you'll be able to just give. Because your mind is renewed to the Word of God concerning generosity. Your mind is no longer fighting you in that area. Are you listening? No longer a struggle. You just give. Because your mind has taken on the ways and thoughts of God in that area of generosity. And so you find it easy. Just The Holy Spirit can just prompt you and you just give. You just bless people. And you don't look at it as, oh no, I've just lost some money. No. You look at it as, I've given and my God will pour back into my life. He has used me to bless somebody. There's great joy in that. Because your mind is renewed to God's thoughts and God's ways concerning generosity. Concerning forgiveness. Like we said earlier, somebody hurts you, but your mind is renewed to God's word concerning forgiveness. Even, you know, even as Christ forgave you, you also forgive. And that becomes settled in your heart and mind. And the next time somebody hurts you, you're just, okay, forgiveness. That's the normal response. Unforgiveness cannot take any root in you because your mind's renewed to the Word of God, God's ways and God's thoughts concerning forgiveness. So a renewed mind is a pure mind. It's reached this stage where it's normal to think aligned to God's thoughts and God's ways. It's just normal. But we all start there where our mind is corrupt and depraved and all of that. But through constant training with the Word of God, our mind is now renewed. It's normal to think according to God's thoughts and God's ways. So in closing, I just want to outline, in the book we will you know, give chapter and verse and explain all these things, but we don't have time for that on a, during the sermon. But I'll just itemize some of the reasons why it's important to renew our minds. I'm just going to mention these things, maybe make a statement or two on it, but uh, we don't have time to explain each of these. You know, we need a renewed mind to love and worship God. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your mind and all your soul. The carnal mind is not eager to worship God. The carnal mind will complain, why did they sing seven songs? They normally sing only five songs. <laughs> 
But a renewed mind is happy. Wow. They gave us more time to worship God. You know. Love the Lord your God with all your mind and all your soul. To understand, number two, to understand the word of God. We need a renewed mind. The carnal mind can, you know, analyze the Hebrew and the Greek, but can, cannot see past that. The renewed mind assimilates the ways of God because it's thinking in a different realm. It's thinking in the realm of God, with God's thoughts and God's ways. And so you begin to understand, these are the ways of God. The Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually understood. They are understood with a renewed mind. Number three, uh, to live a transformed life, which we already explained. The renewed mind results in a transformed life. Number four, to live out of our identity in Christ. And you can study this so beautifully in Scripture. You know, Paul writes in Ephesians 4, 23, 22, 23, 24, he says, you know, put off the old man, verse 24, put on the new man. What's the connection? Verse 23, he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So being renewed in the spirit of the mind enables us to live out of this new person that we are in Christ. A renewed mind is so important even in that regard. Number five, to discern the leading witness and the voice of the Spirit. So when your mind is renewed, you're able to pick up what is from the Holy Spirit, what is from our own soul. You can be led by the Spirit. Number six, helps us understand and prove the will of God, which we already explained. Number seven, we are able to discern right and wrong. We can tell what's right, what's wrong. And number eight, it keeps our mind from being corrupted because now we are a pure mind. We're renewed. So wrong things will impinge on our minds because we're in this world. But because your mind is renewed, you're able to stay free from that corruption that impinges on your minds. So, key takeaway. Worship team, please come. A renewed mind... Number one, a renewed mind, things aligned to God's thoughts and God's ways. For all of us, the call is to renew our minds. Change the way you think. Think aligned to God's thoughts and God's ways. That's for every believer. No option. I mean, no, it's, like, it's not like if you want to do this. No, it's a call for all believers. A renewed mind, things aligned to God's thoughts and God's ways. A renewed mind, uh, we renew the mind with the Word of God and revelation from the Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage you in every situation, pause and think, what does the Word of God say? How should I think in this situation? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Holy Spirit, what are you telling me? Two simple questions. What does the Bible say? Holy Spirit, what are you telling me? Then you can get to know the thoughts and ways of God. And choose that. Choose to think aligned to that in every situation. And a renewed mind results in a transformed lifestyle that's aligned to God's perfect will. So you and I can live in the center of God's will, aligned to His will, if we will consistently think with a renewed mind. I know we often pray, God, I want to be in the center of your will. Wonderful prayer. But the responsibility is on you and me. He said, you renew your mind so that you can prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So when we start thinking with a renewed mind, we will automatically be in that place of the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You'll be in that place. Are you listening? Let's rise to our feet, please. And so, take up this challenge to think God's thoughts, God's ways. What would God think in this situation? What would God do in this situation? Think online to the ways and thoughts of God. We can do that by His Word, by His Spirit. It's not going to happen automatically. We train ourselves over time. But you and I can come to that place where 
it becomes normal natural to think with a renewed mind to think aligned to the ways and thoughts of god this is what god said next sunday we'll talk about overcoming negative thoughts and emotions We're kind of building further on this and then the last sermon in this series we'll talk about developing a positive mindset both important messages but it's all building up towards that i want you to just stay in this whole series and review it because this is not just a sermon series we want to hear but it's something we want to live by we want to practice this is how we live we live with a renewed mind let's take a few moments to worship and then we'll come back and pray cuz miracles happen when you move healing is coming in this room miracles happen when you move heaven is coming oh miracles happen Father, we just pray and ask for the counsel of the Holy Spirit, the the strength, the guidance of the Holy Spirit to teach each one of us how to make this change, how to take on the thoughts and the ways of God in every situation. Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Teach us how to do this. Train us how to do this. I mean each one of us, Lord, be able to renew our minds. The experience transformation the way we live. To be able to prove what is good acceptable and pleasing to you with our renewed minds help each of us in every situation to learn to take on the ways and thoughts of god to do that intentionally and give us the grace to follow through with action 
that's aligned to your ways, aligned to your thoughts. Give us the grace, each one of us. We thank you, Lord. Before we close this morning, I just want to give an invitation to anyone here. Perhaps it's your first time, maybe you've been in church many, many other times, but in case you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, the Bible tells us that all of us, we've sinned against God and our sins have separated us from God. And our sins have consequence. Our sins separate us from God and our sins are taking us into an eternal separation from God in hell. The Bible tells us that. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came into this world. He died for our sins on the cross. Sins of the whole world, every person, every person. He took on the punishment that we should take. The Bible says he was buried, he rose up again, he ascended into heaven, he's alive today, and he offers the gift of forgiveness, salvation as a free gift to every person who would believe in him, who would believe in him. The Bible says, the result of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's the free gift. Salvation cannot be earned. You don't pay for it. All you can do is receive it because the Lord Jesus Christ makes it available for all of us freely. So there's any person here, you've never received Jesus. You've never received this free gift that Jesus is offering to you and me freely. If you've never done it before, I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. Those watching online as well, and I just want to invite you to pray with me. If you'd like to do it, no compulsion is entirely your choice. If you feel prompted in your heart today to do this, pray this with me if you've never done it before. Just say this with me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive my sins. Come into my life. Make me a child of God. And help me follow you. And you alone. The rest of my life. Thank you Lord Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 If you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time, very first time in your life, I want to see your hand. Just raise your hand up. Anybody, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. I know I heard you pray loudly. Thank you. Anybody else, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Anybody else, you prayed this with me for the very first time. You see one more hand there. Let's give the person a good clap. God bless you. Anybody else, you prayed this with me for the very first time. God bless you. God bless you. Just raise your hand until uh, one of our greeters come to you and give you a packet. Uh, we call it the New Believers Bag. So just raise your hand and they'll get it across to you. Uh, there's a little card that says Decision Card. If you write your name and number, please hand it back to them. Then somebody from the church office will call you and just guide you through how to use what's in the bag. Uh, in case you didn't raise your hand on your way out, our greeters will be there. They'll have the same bag. Just tell them I want it. And they'll hand it to you. Just write your name and number. And we'll be happy to call you and tell you what to do. So we're going to dismiss our... I just want to call our pastors. If you're here, Pastor Jean, anybody else, uh, our pastors, the life group leaders. If you're here, please come. Make yourself available up in front so that we could pray for the people. If you need personal prayer, just come. Uh, we'll be here. Our pastors, our life group leaders will be here. We'll be happy to pray with you, minister to you. 
Uh, we're going to dismiss, but we will be here for some time to pray with you. Uh, those of you who have come to serve in Children's Church at 12.45, so we'll have about 20 minutes. We will meet at the back, and we will start our briefing there at 12.45. Let's close. Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.